students, I'm Professor Prototype. And I'm Captain G-Force, and we are part of the Invention League. You might be wondering, what's the Invention League? Well, the Invention League is an amazing organization which helps you to activate the problem-solving superpowers within you. Just like superheroes have powers, inventors and entrepreneurs have powers too. That's right. Inventors have powers like, well, asking questions, finding a problem, curiosity, imagination, determination, and a never give up attitude. There's creativity and confidence, and activating all these powers help inventors to critically solve problems and, of course, share what they create with others. You have all of these powers already within you, and the Invention League is here to help you unmask them. We want to teach you how to share your powers with the world by solving one problem at a time. Together, we'll try fun, hands-on experiences. And when we do that, we'll learn science, technology, engineering, art and design, math, and even entrepreneur skills. At the Invention League, we know every possibility exists in your mind. We are here to help you activate your invention superpowers so you can become an innovative problem solver and change the world. For years, Captain Gadget and Dr. Claire have been teaching kids like you about famous inventors and the inventing process. They want you to become an inventor, too, by participating in the Invention Convention program. So, what do you say? Want to give inventing a try? Well, up next is their Dare to Invent video, and together we'll learn about inventing and how you can be an inventor and compete in the Invention Convention, too. At the Invention League, problem solving is our superpower. And inventors are our heroes. <coughs> oh, oh, hi there. Uh, I'm Captain Gadget Q Thinkamajig, um, and this is Dr. Claire Adahair. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Yes. We're here to talk to you about inventing and how you can be a part of the Invention Convention. The Invention Convention is a great program that started back in 1993 in Sandusky, Ohio, pretty near the birthplace of Ohio inventor Thomas Edison. So where to start, Captain Gadget? Well, let's see. Did you ever think about where all the stuff we have comes from? I mean, all the things that we use every day. Somebody invented it. Somebody just like you sat around and thought, hmm. Why don't you try that? Take the index finger of your choice, tap gently on your cheek and say, hmm. 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 And then they thought, what if? Right. They looked at a problem, probably, and they thought, what if? Like, what if I didn't have to touch a door to open it? Or what if uh, I could invent something just for fun? Or what if I invented a new breakfast cereal? What if? What if? I mean, it just goes on and on. And then they find a problem and they make something to solve that problem. Right, Dr. Claire? Right, Captain Gadget. They find an interesting problem, brainstorm different solutions, decide which solution is the best one, and then build a prototype to start with. Right, and a prototype is... A prototype is the very first one. A first one of a new invention. A model used for testing. A model of something, especially a machine, which can be developed or copied. That's right. Like the Super Soaker Squirt Gun, uh, that prototype was made from a two-liter pop bottle, a clothespin, a little bicycle pump, and some tubing. It worked, but it didn't look like a Super Soaker does today. So that's what you're going to do. Identify a problem and make a prototype. You know, Captain Gadget, I was thinking while you were talking, that's what inventors do. They're always thinking. I was thinking, what if we identified a problem and used the stuff here we have to build a prototype and show the students just how fun inventing is? Right here? Right now? 
right here, right now. Well, I'm sure we could make some kind of prototype. We've got a lot of different things in this tub, but uh, I don't know what problem I'm going to address. Uh, where will we find a problem? Let's think. Hmm. 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 A problem we can use in my own life. And that is? I bump my head a lot. Does anybody else have that problem? Does anyone else bump their head a lot? Seems like a fairly common problem. I mean, I bump my head every once in a while. So people could use our invention. Right. Um, so let's get started on a prototype. Uh, you know what? If we're really going to do this, Dr. Claire, we should keep it in a journal. That's right, Captain Gadget. A journal is what real inventors use and what all of you will use when you're part of the invention convention. You're going to write down everything it takes to make your invention. The research that you do, the problem that you solved, the testing, everything it takes to make your invention. Even the stuff that doesn't work. Because sometimes when you're inventing, the first idea doesn't quite work out and you have to try it a different way. Don't give up, just try a different prototype. Journals are available at our website on inventionconvention.org and the journal will help you get a patent if you'd like to get a patent someday. Now remind me, Dr. Claire, why would somebody want to have a patent? Well... A patent is a government license you can get for your invention. If your invention is patented, it means no one can make or sell your invention for a period of time. Oh, that's right. Well, uh, let's see. We've got a lot of stuff in here. Uh, let's see what we can make a prototype out of. Uh, bumping the head, right? That's the problem. That's the problem. Eh, not the uh, 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 oh, what, No. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, well, how about this, Captain Gadget? Okay, well, how would we use that? Mm. Um, mm. Oh, oh, hey, I like the way you're thinking. Yeah? Okay, uh, not bad, but um, yeah, it, it it's really couldn't be a, uh, a prototype. It's a little wobbly, mm -hmm. and it doesn't afford that much protection. Um, now, right now, it's just Dr. Claire with a spaghetti strainer on her head. We could make this part of a prototype, maybe put some padding around it or springs coming out to uh, to protect your head, but... Write that down. We tried the spaghetti strainer, but no go. Let's see what else we could maybe find. Well, well here's this. Oh, what's that, Captain Gadget? Well, that's a, a, a pillow. It's real cushiony. How about we try that? Could you, like, huh. if you kept it on your head somehow? Well, that's pretty mm. comfortable, but I, I think we need to attach it in some way. Uh, do we have any duct tape? No, no. Oh, hey. Do we have time to glue it on? Oh, Captain Gadget, I think that's a little too permanent. Yeah. Let's keep thinking. Okay. Well, how about this tie? We could tie it on. Okay, let's try it. Uh, no, it's oh. still too slippery. Yeah, just didn't work. Hmm. I'll write that down. Hey, I have an idea, Dr. Claire. I have two balloons here that I was going to use to decorate, but maybe I can make something out of this. Like, if I wrapped one around your head, that might protect it a little bit. This makes me think of a bicycle helmet. They've been invented for a while, but people have changed them and improved on them. Just recently, I saw a foldable bicycle helmet that you can fold in half and put in your backpack. Then I saw an invisible bicycle helmet. You don't even wear it on your head. You wear it around your neck, and if you fall off your bike, out pops your own inflatable airbag. Two different solutions to the same problem. Well, here's something, Dr. Claire. Um, I happen to have two balloons, though, and I was thinking, you know, there's that whole field where scientists and engineers look at how plants and animals solve problems called biomimicry or bioengineering, you know, how they protect themselves or get food or stay warm. Well, if I took this second balloon and maybe folded in half, I could do something that would warn you before you ever bump your head. Sort of like the antennas on an ant or a butterfly. Or 
like the whiskers on a cat. Right. Yeah, I mean, my car has a sensor on the bumper, and when I'm backing up, it goes beep, 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 so I know before I'm ever going to hit my head. Exactly. Let's see if this will go on your head. Okay. Oh, you know what, though? I see something wrong with this prototype already. What's that, Captain Gadget? Well, what do balloons do? Oh, they pop. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we could change the material, maybe put a coating on the top so they didn't pop as easily, or even put foam inside. Um, yeah, I mean, this gives us an idea of what our prototype would look like, but we'd have to keep developing it. Do you think we should test it? Yes, I think we should test it. Okay. You walk towards me. <gasps> Look at that. I know before I even get close to the wall. That's great. You know, uh, now we come to a really fun part of inventing, and that is naming the invention. We could name it after what it does, or we could name it after yourself. Uh, you could just think up a fun, silly name. What do you think we should name it? Hmm. How about the Auntie Bump Cap? I mean, I kind of look like an ant. I like it, the Auntie Bump Cap. It's great. You can invent for a safety problem or a medical problem. You can invent for something that has to do with plants or animals, anything. Sometimes one of the problems people forget about is boredom, and nobody likes to be bored. Many times things have been invented just for fun. For example, this is called a Hoberman sphere. It was invented by, well, can you guess? Mr. Hoberman? Mr. Hoberman, exactly. He was an engineer, and this is all that it does. It's just for fun. People have bought tons of these. Isn't that great? Another great example happened by some creative thinking and an accident. There was an engineer working on ship gauges to keep them level during a ship when it was at sea. Some springs fell off of his workbench, and instead of just falling straight to the floor, one of them kind of walked down a box. He told his wife about that, and she thought it was really cool. She looked through the dictionary and thought about a word to call this spring toy, and she found something that means to move forward with a smooth gliding motion, so they called it the slinky. I have a couple of other examples I'd like to share with you. One is uh, a story about a young man in Maine where it gets really cold in the winter. His name was Chester Greenwood, and when he went outside to play, his ears even hurt when he played outside in the cold. About 150 years ago, people used to use these sorts of things to keep their ears warm. You can see they're shaped like an ear, and you just stick them over your ear, and they hang on there, and they do an okay job. But not everybody's ears are the same size or shape. Sometimes people would lose one and then end up with a cold ear. So Chester Greenwood thought, hmm, maybe I could invent something better to solve that problem. He got together with his grandmother, and they took some cloth, a little piece of wire, and some tufts of fur, made two coverings for ears, and then joined them together. He came up with these earmuffs. There's no incorrect size, and you can't lose one. He invented something more than 140 years ago we still use today. By the time Chester was 19 years old, he received a patent for his design. A decade later, the Chester Greenwood & Company factory were producing his, as he called them, champion ear protectors. He sold his invention to the United States government and people all around the world. He became a millionaire from his invention. But that was just the beginning of Chester Greenwood's career as an inventor. He also invented the yard rake and other simple solutions to everyday problems. Even today, they celebrate Chester Greenwood's birthday, December the 21st in Farmington, Maine. Wow, Captain Gadget, that's pretty cool.
Well, just like Chester, you don't have to get too complicated about your problem or your solution. You can use technology if you know how, if you know how to write an app or use robotics to design. That's great. But remember, some of the best solutions are simple solutions to everyday problems. There was a teacher once who had the problem, how do I keep my papers together? She took a piece of wire and she bent it and she invented, guess what? The paper clip. That's right. That reminds me of a buyer for cotton for Johnson & Johnson Company whose wife loved to cook but would often nick her fingers and get little cuts when she was cooking. They got tired of putting cotton balls and taping them on her wounds, so they came up with, guess what? The Band-Aid? That's right. Simple solutions to everyday problems. And you know, I have another example. You know how I mentioned things can be invented just for fun, or if you change something enough, it can become a new invention? This is a pie pan. And once there were some students working in a bakery who were playing with this by turning it over and sailing it through the air, throwing it back and forth, instead of a baseball or football. Well, some guy heard about that, and he went, hmm, that does sound like fun. Maybe I'll change the material a little bit, and I'll call mine the Whammo Flying Saucer. We know these, though, today as... named after the Frisbee Pie Company. Exactly. This is no longer a pie pan. This is something for sport and fun inspired by a baking dish. So they changed the pie pan enough and its shape to make a new invention for a different kind of usage. Someone else thought, hmm, you know, if somebody's in trouble out on the water, I could throw them a Frisbee a lot easier than I could a great big life preserver. But that's not going to do them any good unless the Frisbee would float and I have a way that I can pull them to shore. Well, that's exactly what somebody came up with. They patented it, and this is called the Save a Life Mini Disc. It's sort of like two Frisbees sandwiched together with a little air pocket underneath so it'll float on water. Plus, it has a cord wrapped around it. To utilize it, all you have to do is put this rubber band around your wrist and if you see someone in trouble in the water, you throw it to them. As you throw it, the cord unravels and you could pull them to safety. Is this a Frisbee any longer? No, it is not. They've changed it enough and made it something brand new. A different solution to solve a different problem. Really great things have happened to our inventors. They've patented their inventions, they've been inducted into the National Gallery for Young Inventors, which is a huge honor as they only select a few students each year from around the country. They've been in national magazines like Popular Science, they've been on local TV, and on national TV shows like The Ellen Show and The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Great things can happen to you when you're part of the Invention Convention. It's easy and fun to be part of the Invention Convention. Let your teacher or instructor know you're interested in inventing. Download the journal from our website, or your teacher may have journals available for you. Identify an interesting problem and build a prototype to solve it. And remember to keep track of the invention process in your journal. That's right, because your classroom, school, or district may want to have a competition where you can show off your invention. You will compete for certificates and other prizes, and when you do, three things have to be there. You'll have to be there, your prototype will have to be there, and your journal will need to be there. You can't lose with the Invention Convention, right, Captain Gadget? That's right. I don't think you can lose at all. You're going to have fun, and who knows, maybe your invention will help everybody. We know every possibility for solving a problem exists in your mind. We hope you take the challenge and enjoy the creative process of becoming an inventor. We can't wait to see what you invent. Oh, 
Hey there. Hello again. How about that, Captain Gadget and Dr. Claire? Let's give them a hand. Now you know. Inventors begin by finding an interesting problem. Don't forget, an invention should solve a problem. The more original the problem, usually the better the solution. Inspiration is all around us. It's in nature. It's with the family, friends, and people you interact with, and in inventions you use every day. An inventor tries out many different ways to solve their problem by learning what works and what doesn't. Remember, inventors and entrepreneurs fail fast and often before they get to their solution. Inventors do lots of searching in stores, magazines, and the internet, at websites like the U.S. Patent and Trade Office, to make sure their invention is not already being sold or patented. They also talk to anyone who might be helped by their invention and people related to the area of life they're inventing within. This helps them find ideas about how to develop their prototype and allows them to get advice on improving their prototype. An inventor use, uses all that they've learned and their invention powers to build an actual prototype of their invention. They keep track of all their work in a journal and often develop a business plan for their invention. Journals are available for you to use in the invention convention at inventionleague.org. Great opportunities are out there for inventors and lots of cool stuff has happened to our student inventors. We hope you are ready to accept this mission and activate your problem-solving superpowers today. Are you ready? Problem-solving can be your superpower too when you join the Invention League. And Take part in the Invention Convention.